What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a marvelous day. I'm feeling a little better, back to about 75, 80%. Got a lot of catching up to do in the garden because I really haven't been out there in about two to three days. So a lot of stuff to do. We're going to try to get some of that done today. Probably take us a couple videos to get caught up. It is still dry here, really, really dry. I don't know if it's been a whole month since we've had any rain, but it's been close to a month since we've had any rain. See that kind of dark sky right there? It's been looking like that all day, but no rain yet. It's supposed to look like this for the next seven days. Hopefully we'll get a shower or two. And when it gets really dry around here, the grass starts dying. And when it gets really, really dry, the water lines start showing up. You can see right there's one running into the where the trampoline sits and another one over there. Not really sure why that happens when it gets super, super dry. But well, that's the indication that we haven't had any rain in a long, long time. So I was able to go round up some help. Abram, do you want to tell them what time it is? It's time, it's tater time. No, you gotta say it like this. It's time! It's tater time! Can you say it? No. Nope, not like that. It's time, it's tater time. That's right, it's tater time. So it's been a few weeks since we dug any taters. Last time, we dug taters, we got this row of Irish cobblers out of here. The French fanglings were the first to go. And that empty spot right there. German butterballs over there are still hanging on. Kennebecs look the best of any of them. They're still hanging on pretty good, although we didn't heal them as tall as we needed to. We got some that are kind of being revealed to the sun there turning green. We'll just have to throw those away. But uh, if that's any indication, we should have some big ones down in there. These Yukon Golds are probably going to be the first to go today. I don't know if we'll get multiple rows today, but definitely going to do those first. Those have died back almost completely. We scratched some of the end of that row way back about a month ago, so we'll have to figure that into our total calculation of how many pounds of potatoes we get. And then, I don't know if it happened today, but in the next few days, we're going to get these Red New Orleans out of here and then probably go ahead and get these Vikings out of here as well. All right, Bubby, let's start digging. I'm expecting some big ones here. Remember, we got to throw the plants outside the garden. Woo-wee, look at there. These are Daddy's favorite to eat right here. I like mashed potatoes. Oh, don't drop Be careful. Lay them in there. You like mashed potatoes? Yeah, I like mashed potatoes. You know what's good with mashed potatoes? What? Some hamburgers and gravy and mashed potatoes shoo -wee, what you talking about whoa can you get it holy cow holy cow Abram look at that that potato is almost as big as your head look at there no it's bigger it's bigger it's bigger than your hand it ain't quite as big as your head might be the biggest Tata's head dad dad you got dig. I gotta dig look yeah he's monsters monsters I think we're gonna fill up this bucket pretty quick. Dad, we're almost filled up the bucket. Dad, you missed that deed. Oh, I missed one again. Dad, you just up. don't see the pokers. I Dad. just ain't got good tater eyes, do I? I'm about to have to go get us another bucket. That was gonna get too heavy to tote. Oh, Dad, look at this one. Look, look at there, you did. Look at there. Oh, see. Missed a big one. Here's some more. Look at you. Daddy. Look at you missing all them taters. Look Daddy, at that. Don't let me dig. Okay, I'll just let you dig, but you gotta get make sure you get them all. Three taters. One bunch. You gonna take your shoes off too? Yeah. Ain't got no shoes and no hat. Look at there. Look at there. Oh, hey, let's put that next to the other one. Okay, we'll see which one's the biggest. So for those Yukon Golds, not a lot of small potatoes, just all monster potatoes. Look at there. Show them, Bubby, how big those two are. Those are huge. Which one do you, I, this is the biggest one, the last Yep. Monster. Those are the biggest potatoes we've ever grown. You want to dig another row? Yeah. Okay, let's get these red taters. So these are called Red New Orleans, Bubby. We're going to get oh, these up. Uh, so these are red taters. Where that one is Viking. We're gonna wait a day or so on those. Let's get these red ones out of here. Oh, look what I found. Look what I found. A uh, Mr. Toad. Oh. Mr. Toad hiding in the taters. Let's put him over here on these other taters. Uh-oh. Oh, there he goes. Oh, I 
Yep, and some big ones. First one. Oh, Dad, I got a big one. Uh oh. Ooh. I want to go back inside the house. Well, I lost my help by halfway through that second row there. He was down for more than one row, but not quite two rows. Anyway, here's what we got as far as the red New Orleans go. Nice, nice harvest. Not very many small potatoes. We got a few of them like that, but most of these are big ones. Those right here make some fine French fried potatoes. And really, really happy with that. Compare that to our Yukon Golds there. Yukon Golds are a little bigger, but we certainly got more of these red New Orleans here. I had one or two at the beginning of the row here where it tends to get a little more water from the overhead sprinkler. One or two of them that have rotted like that guy right there. But just a couple, all the rest were good. So that's a really good sign. Now my buddy Danny over at Deep South Homestead, he swears up and down that these Yukon Golds don't grow good in the South where he lives. And I grant you, he is a little bit further south than us as far as latitude goes, but I might have to head on over to Mississippi and give Mr. Danny a Yukon Gold growing lesson or two because these are one of our better performing varieties year over year over year. And I think it's one of the easiest varieties to grow and it's right up there as far as one of the best varieties to eat in my opinion. Let's go take these under the carport, put them on the scale, and see what our return on investment is for the five pounds of seed potatoes we planted for each of these varieties. All right, let's weigh these Yukon Golds here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. I still need to get me a better scale to weigh my produce. The number should stick. 50.8 pounds. Now we still got to correct for that. We already dug. 50.8 in that bucket all right so 50 pounds in that bucket and we had already dug five foot of that row and we can expect that that five foot if it would have been left there would have performed just like the rest of the row so five divided by 30 gives us about one sixth of the row that had already been dug or 0.16 so if we take 50 and multiply it times 1.16 that gives us 58 pounds so we took five pounds we turned it into 58 pounds, so a little more than 11 times our investment on seed potatoes with the Yukon Golds. And now for these red New Orleans, we got two buckets here. So let's start with this guy. And we got 28 pounds on that bucket. And then on this bucket, give it a second. We got 33 pounds. So 61 pounds total, wow. So for keeping score from all the varieties we've dug so far, we planted five pounds of seed potatoes for each variety. We've got the French Fingerlin, which we had 35 pounds. Now we dug those probably way too early, but it is what it is. We got 35 pounds on those, seven times multiple. The Irish Cobbler, we got 55 pounds on those, 11 times multiple. The Yukons, 58 pounds, so little over 11 times multiple. And then the Red New Orleans, 61 pounds, so a little over 12 times multiple. Gonna be interesting to see what we get from these other varieties. And then we'll do a complete ranking of all the varieties and which one gave us the most poundage per harvest. And we'll also probably mention which ones taste the best and do kind of a complete taste versus yield comparison to see which potato variety we think is the best. All right, good to get those taters harvested. And I keep thinking if I stand out here long enough, it'll start raining, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. So I need to do some work on this popcorn here. So we got pretty good germination on our R997, or maybe it's R977, I can't remember, popcorn. And I always plant it too thick. It's just what I like to do. And I need to come in here and thin this out a little bit. Also need to weed it. Probably also need to side dress it with some of that nature safe nitrogen. A lot to do here, but let's thin it out first. And uh, we'll probably do those other things in the next couple of days. Now when we're thinning corn, there's no real exact way to do this, but I want to get them about six to eight inches apart. If you're not growing on drip irrigation, you probably want to go closer to 12 inches, but with sufficient water down there, I can get by with going six to eight inches apart. So we'll just come in here. And I try to leave the better looking ones. So I may grab those. It's just kind of a pick and choose thing as we go along the row here. 
That one's a little closer than six inches, but we'll leave that one. Grab these here. Somebody asked me one time, could you pull these up and replant them in a spot you had slips? And I guess you could. I've never tried that. I don't know if they would survive or not. Corn's pretty hardy, but uh, I guess you could try that. I don't really have any skips here. I've just got too many plants. All right, all right, all right. Besides the weeds in there, that there looks a lot better, and them plants should start to show enough pop here pretty soon, especially if we could get some rain. Still got some crabgrass want to come up in there. That stuff is pesky this time of year. Tough to get rid of. We just have to kind of aggravate to death and it eventually go away. And a little more thinning we need to do here with these squash. This Zephyr and Costata Romanesca and, oh, I can't remember that other variety we planted here. The one that's supposed to grow goldfinch. That's it. Need to come in here and thin these guys out. I planted these too thick, obviously, just to make sure I get a good stand. We want to thin these out to one every two feet or so. I give myself plenty of room here so they can grow this way or this way, left or right. And we can stack them in the row a little tighter that way. Now I know this might seem a bit wasteful, planting all these seeds and coming and thinning them out, but you never know how things are gonna germinate. And I like having a uniform stand here. If I get a blank spot and I have to go replant a seed, a lot of times, that seedling won't be able to get up and get going before it gets overcrowded by the others. So this way they're all the same size. Yeah, we plant more seeds than we need. It'll be all right. We got a nice uniform stand here to compare these varieties. And I don't really care where the emitters are along this row relative to the plants I'm saving because the roots on these are long enough to where they're gonna reach an emitter on either side of the plant. So not worried about where the emitters are. Just wanna give each of these plants a couple feet of space on each side. All right, got the squash thinned a bit. May have to thin them some more, we'll see. But I can actually get in there and weed around them now. Getting some disease on this guy already, which is crazy. May end up yanking that one out of there. We'll throw some fertilizer or shoot some fertilizer through this drip system. Sometimes we can get them to outgrow it. Sometimes you just gotta runt and you need to pull it. Got our cucumbers thin too, our Supremo cucumbers. These puppies are looking really good. Oh, there's one I missed right there. Let me grab him out of there. So we'll be putting a trellis up, trellis netting up pretty soon on these guys so they can start climbing. Now let me show you one thing we don't have to thin. These peanuts here. Now I don't know if it's a complete scratch yet. I'm still debating on whether to scratch it because it's just going to be hard to keep the weeds down when I don't have a full stand of foliage there. But not very good germination at all on these Valencia peanuts. And I planted these puppies thick in there too because a viewer told me he had bought some from the same place and not got good germination. So I was kind of prepared for that, but I thought I planted them thick enough to overcome that. We're still seeing the ground crack right there in some spots like right there so we may be getting some more plants coming up here sure would help if we could get a rain i've been keeping the seed bed soaked pretty good so we'll just see what happens maybe it'll fill in a little better but if it does it we may end up scratching it did i mention that it's dry here i don't know if i said that already in this video but it is dry here now i know our friends over in texas and even parts of louisiana are soaked and have had way more rain than they need but here we need some and as it's been dry here at least in georgia i'm not sure how far the drought has extended maybe some in alabama as well i've had a lot of people asking how long how often should i be watering my garden most people's gardens are really kicking right now wide open and that's a tough question to answer because there are a lot of variables at play you know are we talking absolutely no rainfall like we've had in the last three to four weeks here Depends on what kind of soil you have. If you got sandy soil, you got to water a lot more often than harder clay soils that tend to retain a little more moisture. Also depends on what kind of plants you're growing. And that's one advantage to breaking it up into, whew, I wipe sweat. And that's one kind of advantage to breaking things up into subplots like I have it here, where we have certain crop families planted in each plot. That way the watering needs of that plot is separate than another plot. And I can water my corn a lot more than I wanna water, say these pole beans right here. Now I know that isn't ideal for everybody to have 10 different plots and a different crop family in each plot. That kind of gives you an idea of 
one of the reasons why we do split everything up because each crop each vegetable has its own water needs has its own fertilizer needs and so some will water a lot more than others so for what it's worth i'll take you around and give you a few examples of how long i've been running water how often for some of these plants in the last three to four weeks when we haven't had any rain so in this plot where we've got peppers tomatoes and tomatillos the tomatoes have not shown any signs of being stressed throughout this kind of drought period i've got wheat straw on some of them which is conserving some moisture obviously some of that wheat straw is sprouting no big deal and the other ones that don't have straw on them we can peer through there are healed pretty high so we've got some moisture conservation there and they're planted real thick in there so everything is shaded somewhat on the peppers here which are not healed we can see those water spots from where those drip emitters are and a lot of times i'll just kind of keep an eye on this i'll turn the water on and once i see those water spots you know around that base of that plant kind of like it is now about that big not really worried about them connecting so much then i'll come out here and turn it off and if these peppers which aren't healed and aren't mulch with straw are happy then everything else in this plot is pretty happy now the time it takes to get to this point will vary sometimes depending on how sunny how hot it is that day but usually i can get to this point in i'd say two to three hours now our okra here is a different story okra is really heat tolerant it's related to cotton and all the cotton around here blows my mind you can't see it through those trees blows my mind how it germinates and grows without any rain but it does anyway so this okra right here is not on drip irrigation i don't like putting okra on drip and i've just been coming out here about once a week and hand watering this right at the roots there just giving a little splash not staying out here too long 10 or 15 minutes and that's been keeping this stuff happy now it is getting a little bit of shade in the afternoon from this arch panel trellis which is helping it not dry out as much but okra doesn't need near as much water as something like peppers or tomatoes now the most water hungry thing i've got currently is this sweet corn which is almost ready to harvest we can see some silks drying up there they're almost crispy enough to pull i could probably pull one now we'll save that for the next video so this stuff can just drink it up something crazy so every other night i've been letting this run all night i'll turn it on at eight or nine o'clock i'll turn it off in the morning so this uh was it last night maybe no not before last i ran it all night and you can see it doesn't even look wet in there so tonight it'll run all night again and it'll soak it up and you really got to pour the water to corn when it's at this stage if you want some nice plump kernels and probably right behind the corn as far as water needs currently in my garden would be this winter squash pumpkin patch here and i've been using these giant pumpkins here it's kind of my indicator plant it lets me know when everything's fairly dry although recently we've just been watering non-stop around the clock but the leaves on these giant pumpkin plants tend to wilt before anything else does out here in the garden before those watermelons before anything so when these guys start wilting i know we got to water everything and i haven't run i ran it all night one time on this plot but i've been having to give this about four to five hours of water every other day so not as much as the corn certainly more than the tomatoes though so maybe that was helpful maybe it wasn't like i said a lot of factors to play there you know how much rainfall you've had soil type even how densely you have stuff planted if you've got the soil covered or not so many variables there but at least that gives you an idea of how much i've been watering with absolutely no rainfall over the last almost month and i haven't really done the calculations as far as how long leaving that drip on equates into inches of rain or anything like that it's just by feel for me i can look at the plants and tell if they're thirsty or not and i'll give them some water if they are but i'd be interested to hear about your watering schedule i'm sure for some of you it's very similar to mine some of you it's probably very different some of you guys in texas probably haven't had to water your garden in a very very long time and as far as the potatoes go i know a lot of you at this point have harvested all your potatoes so if you've got a final ranking as far as the different varieties you grew considering taste and yield i'd love to see that final ranking and be able to compare that to what our final ranking is in a few weeks when we end up digging all of ours if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe ring the bell like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm oh
veil mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life 